feeling like you almost died? Why? What happened? A bad car accident. All my teeth fell out. I sing faggy and I fall smile. What? Guys, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. Hi guys, welcome to my channel and welcome to another video. If you're new here, my name is Noah Zendombela, also known as Gwazi Bear on all social media platforms. Do subscribe, be a part of this family, and if you're returning something, welcome back, darling. Now guys, as you can tell by the title of this video, it's another story time and I'm still battling with the language issue. So I'll do the best that I can to tell the story time in English, but sometimes I will dip into Isizulu and I will put subtitles or whatever they're called here at the bottom. All right, let's get into the story time. Okay, okay guys, so many, many moons ago, I was pregnant and I was very, very young. So I um, was basically a teen mom, um, but that's a story time for another day. Bottom line, in the story time, I was approached by Isangoma you would call these traditional healers i think yeah i was approached by a traditional healer whilst at home one day so basically background story is that um i grew up in a very um christian home and we never believed in traditional healers or isangoma um and all of that we just believed we believe we believed we believe that there's just christ and and that's it nothing else sharp um so um also disclaimer guys um, i don't have anything against anyone's religion or beliefs so please don't come for me this is just my experience and yeah that's what the story time is about so basically i was a teen mom i was pregnant young and i remember i went through the worst depression now that i know what depression is i know that i went through depression but at the time i was just going through a lot and i didn't know what it was i was crying every day and it was just a lot and the reason behind that is that when i fell pregnant the father of my kid decided to run away from his responsibilities so i was a teenager i was pregnant with no baby daddy basically so whilst going through all of this i remember i would cry every day when i when i say every day guys i would literally be bawling my eyes out every single day that was my life but on this particular day it was one of the good days so i wasn't crying i was okay and i remember i was sitting outside at home and now you've probably heard from my previous story times that i used to stay on the main road so every taxi every bus every pedestrian that would walk by my house would actually pass right in front of my gate Okay, so on this day i'm sitting outside i can see all the cars pedestrians and everything on the road and this young man comes along and i can see just by his um, clothing that this person is a traditional healer so he had the beads he had um he had this ibai we call it ibai and um i could see okay this is a traditional healer so although we grew up in a christian home we were always taught to respect everyone regardless of their beliefs regardless of their religion um so when this guy comes along he's just like hello and i'm like hi how are you and he's like i'm good and it looks shiny guys you know that you know everybody in the area like literally you know everybody in the townships everybody knows everybody and everybody is in everyone's business basically so um i look at this guy i'm like his face is not familiar but okay he's saying hello so i'm gonna say hi back and then he's like please can you come closer you know so i'm like oh okay and i go to him and he's like how are you i'm like no i'm good how are you and he's like no i'm also good and he's like the spirits are telling me to tell you something and in my mind because i don't believe in all this traditional healing stuff i was just like oh here we go so guys as he's like the spirits are telling me to tell you something i'm just like okay here we go let me just listen and not react and just hear what he has to say and then he's like um your pain or your tears are not in vain sort of so he just says um in Isu, i want to say it in Zulu. 
ati inembe zako angege wele panso, your tears will not fall to the ground. That's the direct translation. And I'm just like, okay, what is this guy talking about? Because today, of all days, I literally have not cried. So what tears is he referring to? And I continue to listen to him and he goes on and he says, um, the father of this kid, and he looks down at my stomach, like my stomach area. And that's where I was shocked because first of all, nobody knew I was pregnant. Okay, well, my family knew at that time, but I was like seven months along when my family found out that I was pregnant. That's how small my stomach was. So now for a complete stranger that I've never seen in my life before to come and talk about my pregnancy that nobody else knows about was just shocking. But then I'm just like, okay, let me continue to listen to this guy. And he says, the father of this child will come back. And um, him coming back will be because of a serious accident that he's going to be involved in. It's going to be a car accident, but he won't die. Um, but he will just come back and realize that he needs to take care of his responsibilities. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, um, he's a person that believes in traditional stuff. So when he has that car accident, his family will take him to a traditional healer who will tell him that the reason why the accident happened is because he's not taking responsibility for his own blood. Now, all this information is new to me because remember, I grew up in a Christian home. I don't know all this stuff. So this person that's coming to me with this information about the future, I'm already just like, oh my God, what is happening here? But anyway, I listen to him and then straight after he gives me all that information, he's like, yeah, that's it. I gotta go now. And he leaves. So I'm still standing there in complete shock. Um, and then I walk back into the house. And I remember I didn't tell anyone about this situation until like several days later when I told my sister. And I was like, hey, boo. a guy came up to me and said this, 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 this. And then she was like, ah, we are bad Because like, you know, you know them. Sharp. Days go by, months go by, I give birth to a beautiful baby girl, Ulusanda, right? And just life moves on. The pain sort of fades away. It doesn't completely fade away, I will be honest, but it sort of gets better as time goes on. My baby grows and she's now two years old, right? And I receive a call. When I receive a call, now guys, with me, I'm not a person that changes numbers a lot, so even now, the number that I'm using now is the number that I've been using for maybe 20 years, or plus or minus 20, 15 years, something along those lines, but I'm not a person who changes my numbers a lot, so at that time, the number that I was using was the same number that I had been using since I had a phone. So I get a call, I answer my phone and I'm like, hello? and uh, it's an unfamiliar number and on the other side of the call is my baby daddy let's call him skila for the purpose of this um video and i'm just like yebo and he's like um this is so and so speaking and i would like to see you if it's possible and the baby you know and i'm just like whose baby whose baby I was being petty but anyway he's like no I understand that you're still angry and what 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 but I really need to see you um, we just need to talk and yada 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 so I'm like okay you can come through on Friday we can see you on Friday Friday comes guy comes okay so when he comes he's just like if you don't mind can we please go to the mall and um, just get a few things and stuff so i'm like okay sharp he greets my daughter she's now two she's talking she's walking she's a, a, a grown baby you know um so we go to the pavilion in durban and i think we went to edgar's if i'm not mistaken and then he just says to me please can you take anything that the child needs and um i just like to get whatever she needs for her and mind you in my mind i'm just like this child is now two. You should have been there to buy nappies. You should have been there to buy formula. You should have been there to buy. I'm a purite. I'm a cyrillic. I'm a in in. Now this baby is like two. She's eating proper food now. Um, 
there's really nothing that she needs you know so uh, we get to acres i pick up a, a couple of clothes because uh, that's all really that i could think of that she she didn't need it but i was just getting it because hey the offer was there but i was just like two years later Ozofi, 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 whatever like like seriously but anyway um i pick up a couple of things and um I remember I think we got something to eat after that and then we drove back home now on the way um, from the mall back home he then like starts talking about um, how he's so guilty and he feels so bad that he did me wrong and everything and he really wants to start taking responsibility for his child and 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 from the conversation I could tell that it was wasn't only about the child anymore but he also sort of hinted to the fact that he wants us to try again and i'm just like is he mad because after what he did he thinks was he we could just pick up from where we left off like seriously and then i say to him no i understand that you want to come back and be in your child's life i'm not going to stop that from happening if you want to take care of your child and you want to start taking responsibility I'm not going to stop you from doing that. You can do that. But as far as you and I go, never. Never going to happen. Forget it. Like, never. And you can tell that he was like a bit disappointed and everything. Um, but that's, it, it was what it was, you know. It is what it is. <laughs> it was what it was. So, um, and then on the way, he sort of now starts this conversation. He goes, hey, by the way, you know that I almost died. And I'm like, you almost died? Why? What happened? And he says, I was involved in such a bad car accident. In that moment, my heart stopped. Literally. Because I was like, what? How is this possible? And one thing about me and my facial expressions, I have no control over them. <laughs> I really don't. So when you say something to me and i'm shocked or whatever my face will say it before my mouth does basically i'm that type of person so in that moment i froze i, I literally think i was like i don't know what my face looked like but i think <laughs> that i was like because not because of what he was telling me of course he thought that i was just shocked because of what i'm hearing that he almost died but I was shocked because I now thought back to two years ago when this Sangoma came to me and told me that this would happen. And I was shocked. Now, obviously, he didn't um, tell me that he had gone to a traditional healer and the traditional healer told him this. But I knew from the Sangoma that that's what had happened. So now that's why he's back and trying to take care of his child, you know. And I was like, oh, what happened? He's like, no, literally in my car. I don't know what happened, but I found myself under a truck. My car just went under a truck. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah. All my teeth fell out. I sing, Fagi, I'm a false man, Jay. And I was just like, what? Guys, I'm not laughing. I'm not laughing. So he tells me that he's got some false teeth or crowns or whatever they're called. And Jay, that's what happened. So I'm like, oh, okay. And now in my mind, I'm like, I grew up not believing in all these things. Why is it that this thing that this person told me two years ago is actually happening? Why? How? How is it happening? And I started questioning like a lot of things. But at that time, I was just like, I'm young. I don't understand a lot of things. And I'm just going to let things be. But the more get cooler, the more I'm just like, there's so many things that I don't know. There's so many things that I feel like I'm not in touch with because of how I grew up. And ooh, my battery is flashing. Um, but bottom line is that that some woman told me this would happen, and it did happen. Call it coincidence. But Nina, I believe that that Sangoma had some sort of gift, spiritual gift. I don't know what it's called, but to know such a thing, crazy. So it just comes to that's the end of the story time guys and i just like saying good like wrapping it up i'm just like there's so many things that are 
like there are just ununderstandable <laughs> I don't know the right word to use in English but they unexplainable and they happen and we just don't have the right the right knowledge and we don't have the right people to tell us or us and we can be like misdirected um, in life because of, of, of this but yeah that's my story time i hope that you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a big thumbs up and also if you have like some sort of insights into this kind of thing please share with me in the comment section i really am interested in knowing a bit more um of these sort of things guys like get interested um so yeah that's the end of the video guys don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed don't forget to like and i will see you guys in my next video bye and another thing i'm hoping you guys didn't notice that my lashes are not the same <laughs> anyway bye guys